In this episode, we look at the boxing career of a Hall of Fame boxing trainer who also deserves a nod as a Hall of Fame fighter. How good was Jack Blackburn? Charles Henry Blackburn was born on May 20th, 1883 in Versailles, Kentucky. Blackburn stood 5 feet 10 inches. He had an aggregate weight of around 141 pounds for his career. He primarily fought as a lightweight and welterweight, though he would also compete against much larger men. Though he had 172 bouts or more, Blackburn's official record is 49 wins, 9 losses, and 12 draws. 34 of his wins were by knockout. He also had 4 no contests and 1 no decision bout. His win percentage was 64, his knockout percentage was 45. Blackburn was a great defensive fighter who could slip punches, forcing competitors to work hard to land cleanly on him. He was a very skilled fighter and most always was in a competitive fight regardless of the level of competition. He took on the best fighters of his time and gave them trouble due to his length and ability to use that length to his advantage. He also possessed one of the greatest chins in the sport as he took punches from some of boxing's greatest punchers and wasn't phased. Blackburn's first significant test came on May 4, 1903, when he took on tough and travel contender Dave Holly in a no decision bout in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. After six rounds of action, the fight was declared a draw, though some newspapers favored Blackburn as the victor. Blackburn would step in with former American middleweight champion Jack Twin Sullivan on June 19th for a no decision contest that ended in another six round newspaper draw. Blackburn would commence in a series of tough battles to close out 1903, the first being a November 2nd contest with former world lightweight champion and a man regarded as the greatest lightweight ever, the old master Joe Gans. Gans came into the fight with an astonishing 135 victories, 7 defeats, and 17 draws. Blackburn pulled out a thin newspaper decision in the 6th round contest despite being dropped in the first round. In the aftermath of the fight, Al Herford, Joe Gans' manager, claimed that Gans was out of shape for the fight. He also stated that Blackburn was too tough in game to box in a sixth round contest and requested the rematch be 15 rounds or more as he viewed a fight of that length as the only means for Gans to secure a victory over Blackburn. After dropping the sixth round decision to Dave Holly in their November 21 return bout, Blackburn would step in the ring with the Boston Bone Crusher, Sam Langford, a man regarded as the greatest fighter of all time. The fight took place in Boston on December 23rd with a prearranged draw to be rendered should the fight go the 12 round distance. The fight ended up going 12 rounds and despite the draw, the Boston Globe, Boston Herald, Boston Journal, and Boston Post all reported that Blackburn had the better of the fight. Blackburn then stepped in the ring with former world welterweight champion Mike Twin Sullivan on December 31st. The fight was slated for 15 rounds and was ultimately ruled a draw. The newspaper sources favored Sullivan despite the verdict. Blackburn kicked off 1904 with the January 1st 12 round points victory over Ireland's Jimmy Gardner followed by a January 8th draw with contender Sam Bowen. Blackburn would then step back through the ropes in a return bout with Sam Langford on January 11, fighting to another six-round draw. Blackburn would meet Gans in a return bout on March 25th. Gans would be in top form this time as he won a clear decision over the 15 rounds. Blackburn would secure two six-round newspaper decision wins over Dave Holly and Sam Bolin on August 26th and December 3rd. This would lead to a December 9th trilogy fight with Sam Langford. Both men were in top form during the contest, which would end in a 15-round draw. After defeating contender George Cole on June 10, 1905, Blackburn would move into a three-fight run with rival Sam Langford all within the same year. Their first meeting of 1905 and fourth in their fight series took place on August 18, 1905 in Leaperville, Pennsylvania. Langford would defeat Blackburn via decision in 15 rounds in a competitive fight. The two men jumped back into the ring on September 20th in Allentown, Pennsylvania. This fight would end in a draw after 10 rounds. Their final meeting was on October 7th, 1905 in Philadelphia. The fight would end in a one round no contest. The Philadelphia item reported the fight as being fake, thus prompting the unexpected early ending. Blackburn would again step in the ring with Joe Gans on June 29, 1906 for a six-round contest in Philadelphia. 
Gans will put on a defensive display as he outboxed Blackburn, who was unable to land anything effective on Gans. Gans would win a clear newspaper decision. Blackburn would pick up a six-round newspaper decision over Dave Holly on October 11, 1906, before defeating rival George Cole on New Year's Day 1907 in Philadelphia. This, too, would be a six-round newspaper decision. Blackburn would again defeat Cole over six rounds in June. Blackburn's next opponent of note was Irish-born contender Mike Donovan. The two met on October 18th. The fight was a back-and-forth give-and-take battle fairly even over the six rounds. The fight was recorded as being a draw by some sources, but others did note that Blackburn had the better of the contest and won via newspaper decision. Blackburn would take on former world welterweight champion Harry Lewis in Philadelphia on November 20th. The two men put on a great display, but Blackburn got the better of Lewis and was a more clever fighter. An official decision wasn't rendered, though in the end, Blackburn won via newspaper decision and many newspapers viewed him as the better of the two. Blackburn would again face Mike Donovan on December 24th, showing his prowess by picking up a 10-round newspaper decision. After drawing with Donovan on April 21st, 1908, Blackburn would step in the ring with one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time and former world light heavyweight champion, Philadelphia Jack O'Brien. Fittingly, the fight took place in Philadelphia on June 10th. In a quick-paced contest, O'Brien would drop Blackburn in the opening round before outclassing him and nearly stopping him in the sixth and final round of the contest. O'Brien would win the newspaper decision with no dispute. After another six-round newspaper points victory over Mike Donovan on November 23rd, Blackburn would pick up another four victories to close out 1908. Blackburn's career would come to a screeching but temporary halt. Blackburn was known to get into altercations outside of the ring. A January 1909 argument with another man led to Blackburn shooting and killing the man. Amid the scuffle, Blackburn received a knife slash to the left side of his face, which is prevalent in his fight photos. Blackburn was sentenced to 15 years in prison for manslaughter, but got out on good behavior after five years. Blackburn resumed his boxing career in 1914, and after picking up a victory in his first bout since 1908, Blackburn would go on a losing skid. This started with a six-round newspaper decision loss to heavyweight contender Gunboat Smith on May 20th. Outweighed by 30 pounds or more, Blackburn was dropped multiple times and nearly stopped in the fifth round before ultimately losing a six-round newspaper decision. On January 25, 1915, Blackburn stepped in with the fighter with claim as the greatest fighter of all time, former world middleweight champion, the Pittsburgh windmill, Harry Greb. The fight took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Blackburn would lose the newspaper decision over six rounds despite a good defensive showing. Greb outthrew and outlanded Blackburn over the contest. It was reported that Greb had to throw 10 punches to land one as the elusive Blackburn was able to fend off the majority of his offense. Blackburn would eventually get back to winning ways but could never quite recapture his pre-prison form. In his last two notable fights, Blackburn would be stopped in four rounds on June 24, 1920 at the hands of Hall of Fame great Kid Norfolk. He would also be stopped in four rounds in a July 24, 1922 contest with the underrated Panama Joe Gans. Blackburn would retire in 1923, but he wouldn't be done entirely with the sport of boxing. He eventually became the trainer of former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis. He also trained Hall of Fame lightweight Sammy Mandel. His work as a trainer led him to being inducted in the International Boxing Hall of Fame as a trainer in 1992. Jack Blackburn died on April 24, 1942, at 59. He was one of the greatest fighters to never get a shot at a world title, but he held his own against the best of his era. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.